We already disassembled this, which was the PS1 Classic. It probably still works. Just have to, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple parts, ultimately. We have a video on that separately if you want to see it. But what we haven't yet looked at is the controllers. And this is arguably one of the most important aspects of the PS1 Classic. First of all, because its weight is equal to the entire device that plays the games. And uh, secondly, replicating the mechanical feel of playing the games on the original controller, this one, is important to getting the experience right. So we have these. We're going to disassemble one of these from the new PS1 Classic. It's a $100 console. Uh, whether or not it's worth it, we haven't yet reached a verdict, but we'll link it below anyway in case you think it is. And then we're going to take apart one of these and see how the components differ between the 24-year-old controller and the new one. Uh, and also, I'm going to need this because we bought the 24-year-old controller used. Before that, this video is brought to you by EVGA's RTX 2080 Ti XC Ultra video card. We recently used this to beat our Founders Edition overclocking results with its additional power target headroom and cooling capabilities. The XC Ultra uses a 2.7 extra thick heat sink for quiet operation under low loads, but also maintains higher clocks on average over the FE model. Learn more at the link in the description below. Here's the process we're gonna take for disassembling these. To make the best comparison, we are going to follow the same steps for each one and just mirror them. So it'll be take off the back of this one, take off the back of this one, and keep progressing through it. And if there are any differences, even in the screws, we'll find them, just because it'd be kind of interesting to see what has changed Overall, tools for the job, we're just going to use a pair of Phillips head iFixit screwdrivers. I'll link the ProTec toolkit down below. And then we're working on our uh, GN mod mat, which you can find on store.gamersnexus.net, which will be useful for screw tracking on the grid, even though it's got a GPU silhouette. Let's start with the old controller. This is a legitimate PS1 controller with a copyright date that is not externally visible, but it is from the SCPH 1080, that's the controller, and it came with the original 1000 series PS1. And it is probably kind of gross. This was probably not used since like 20 years ago, which means anything on it is dead by now. But we did buy it on eBay, so uh, probably a good idea just to do some basic cleaning first. Those are Phillips. This has been opened before, actually. These are slightly stripped, some of these. So a previous owner may have cleaned this out. Hopefully that's just glue. Or 20 years of human skin. We have... PCB that we'll have to look at, but let's first take apart the new one and see. So far, these steps are the same, although these screws are much cleaner and not tampered with. Controller, Sony Computer, Sony Interactive. They've changed the name of the company. It used to say Sony Computer Entertainment, but legal, legal changes, they cannot get away with uh, skirting, I don't think. So for the most immediate differences here, you can see that the base of the original controller has these plastic supports underneath the button panel and the D-pad, where just pushing down on those things, you have some rigidity beneath them. That would be my understanding of what those are there for. And then, because there's no electromechanical function other than just support. And then this one, instead of having these uh, supports on the base of the controller, they've moved them to the top of the controller and attached them to the underside of the PCB mount, which is actually quite different as well. Because if you look at this old PCB, <laughs> uh, size difference is tremendous, first of all. They've also got like pieces of PCB in here for the button, the bumpers, we'll show you that in a second. But man, this is just tremendously different. It's amazing how much we've shrunk in technology. But uh, so whole PCB here, versus just a small one that's attached to a piece of plastic with the supports now moved to the plastics. Probably a bit, probably a bit more sturdy that way. But um, for the cabling, that's been changed <laughs> to one that you could actually disconnect from here if we cut the, uh, if we sort of unroute that cable, that'll come out. That's just a USB header. So there you go. Micro USB for this cable, which is pretty cool because it's USB to USB. So if you wanted to plug this into your system, you could, like your PC. So that plugs in, which is obviously a, a major technological difference, whereas this one 
It has just a, a pinout that feeds into a much fatter cable. And that is a six wire cable. You can see a capacitor underneath it, which we don't really see these types of capacitors in this kind of electronic too much anymore, where it's a, a really small device. Now we have much more power efficient solutions. They don't require the same type of capacitance. We also have smaller capacitors. So we'll look at that in a second, but mechanically the differences are already somewhat significant. And a lot of that is getting rid of this massive unnecessary PCB. What about measurements? So center to center about 81.7, plus or minus one. Center to center, that's pretty damn good. Base of L and R2, we're at 110.44. Pretty damn good. Or 9.86, I would say that's within error. So that's about 81.4. It's about 81.4. Okay, so let's just, let's go ahead and call it, say the controller is more or less exact replica in terms of the distance of everything and sizing. So that's pretty cool. That's true to, true to spirit. And other differences here. So the base, you can see that there are these two supports uh, around the screw down there, which don't exist on the new one. And then you can also see that the trigger button or whatever their official terminology is, is installed a bit differently where they've got this sort of bracket down here that's screwed in and acts as a support. Uh, and they can't, oh, gross. <laughs> They can't press right now because I mean, it's not attached to anything. Whereas this one uh, does not have the external support. It's just a button. It's completely ind independently mechanical, holds itself in, all that stuff. Uh, on the top half, buttons here are executed a little differently. You've got this entire external housing around the switch itself. That's the switch. It's a rubber switch. We don't know what it is yet. Probably Omron or something like that. Is this? That is a rubber switch as well. Pretty similar, similar feel overall, but housed differently. And then for this PCB, that controller, as in the, not this, but the IC, IOKBC 830AZ0B, revision A01. So do with that what you will. I'd have to look it up and maybe, maybe we'll in a bit. But that's a controller of some kind as an integrated circuit, like a, you know, literal controller, not a handheld game controller. Ribbon cable here attaching to probably another small PCB. We'll look at that. USB cable, you could easily replace it if you needed to. That's really nice. Meanwhile, on this one, it's just a bunch of PCBs. So you have these cables running around the whole outer edge of it. Those connect with the PCB here that it looks like is acting as an interconnect uh, to the trigger buttons. And then it's going down, it's got the wire here to interface with the base PCB. I'd be curious what the latency difference is between button presses on new and old. It's probably unnoticeable, but it is, uh, I'd be curious to see if it's measurable. Let's get this PCB out of here. This should just lift up. This whole thing might lift out too, but let's maybe extract the PCB first, I think. Okay, got it. Those cables are exceptionally easy to break. So if you ever open one of these, be careful of that. So this has a little clip on it. There's a clip over here and a clip here. So these two clips right there, you just push those back and then it'll pop off the rails that it's on. So we push those and this should kind of come up on its own. There it goes. Okay, so you have to rotate it to get it out. It has a little notch in there. So here's our PCB. There's what's under it, if you're curious, just black plastic. And we'll check the other side in a second. PCB, I have to be careful that liquid metal on there. <laughs> so the PCB, we already went through that side. That's side A, this is side B. And there's nothing there for you to look at, but that's what it looks like. We'll get a shot of those names if anyone wants to look them up online, try and find these parts or something for replacements later. You'll have a reference material shot for that. It's a very simple PCB. It's just acting as as the literal controller, the processor of, of the input. How do we disconnect this? Okay, so this is pretty easy actually. This is, this is good construction, I will give them that. It's very serviceable. So a uh, clip here, you just kind of push that plastic clip 
there's a pop when it reseats itself. So clip, and then there's a clip down in the bottom left controller near the left hand grip over here, right there. And then the other one was up there. And that's all it is, just those two. That's really cool that it's so serviceable. There you go. That's not something you're gonna see on the old one. I will, I will guarantee you that. So breaking that rib ribbon cable, if you did in fact break, it would be very bad. You would need a new, a new controller basically, or a new entire strip here. So for this, you've got a ribbon cable that runs to everything. You can see these little trace wires in, inside of the cable and the plastic housing. Those are running to all the buttons. And where is the button itself? Is it even? Yeah, so I think what's happening here, you've got your literal buttons on the top like the, the ones you activate, and then those press against the switch, which the, the switch is gonna be in here. Um, I don't know if switches, I guess the, the accurate term. It, there is no electrical function, and I'll show you that in a second, that's pretty cool. There's no electrical function in this switch. It's entirely mechanical. So you push that down, it's got a spring, it actuates, it depresses the black bump there, and then that impacts against the electrical switch over here, which is this plate. It's not really a plate, but it's just a thin sheet of plastic. And uh, then you've got the wires running through that to detect the signal. So that is the modern version. Before we tear this down further, let's look at the old one. This is, this is pretty good design. Very compact, very cheap. And um, uh, if it holds up, it's good. I mean, that's, you kind of question how long that holds up, but I'm also not familiar with the other controllers Sony makes, so I don't know if that's their standard. So this one, we're going to unseat the cable. You can see that it's really crimped in there. Does that disconnect? That might not disconnect. I could individually remove the pins from this header, but the header itself, I do not believe unsockets from, no, that is attached to the PCB. So we're going to leave that there. We've got an old cap, which is rated for 85 degrees Celsius. So you probably, I don't know how many hours you get at 85 C, but uh, every 10 hours beyond that, you lose half the life of the capacitor. But these shouldn't get too hot anyway. OK, so well, that was simple enough. OK, so these pull up. This is actually pretty clever engineering as well for the resources they had of the time. So let's remove that. Let's put this aside for a second. We'll compare those at the same time. This mat's getting gross from the used part stuff. Gross, gross. So here's the major difference is the, uh, the top side of the PCB. You can see that it's been completely replaced with just a plastic underlying sheet. And then this electrical is just a cable with some buttons integrated in it that the rubber pushes impacts. And on the old one, it's a PCB. You've got a couple small caps in there, a couple of resistors. For the cable, you can see the pins. This is why we couldn't remove that cable. The pins are sticking through the PCB and soldered. So that does not come out, which is good that I stopped trying. And uh, there's a small SMD in the middle. This is all old news by now, but 9751H, CFS, 8121, I don't know anything about that part. It's too old for me to have ever heard of. And gross solder work on this side, but that's where you're getting the attachment for the bumper button, which is attached to its own PCB. And you can see those pins sticking through on this side. So that cable is routed through the PCB and then all soldered in there. That's a thick PCB too. Not, not that many layers, just thick, like plastic style. And um, here's the uh, correct orientation of it, right side up. So there's square, X, circle, triangle, and then your left down, right, up, so forth. So um, this is the plate that you're impacting with the rubber switches on the, the old controller. And we'll look at that too and see how that one, uh, how, the, how the build quality is, the assembly is on that one even though I kind of don't want to touch this part of the controller. Uh, so this is the old. Let's just pull this one off. And don't maybe don't zoom in too much and give everyone something to 
have nightmares about it. That's not that bad, though. And here's the new one. So which one did we just pull out there? Let's put them in the same orientation. So that's pretty remarkably similar, considering there's 24 years of age between them. So, I mean, aside from being clear, the, the button itself is pretty damn similar. Although this one's kind of worn out, but that's because it's used. Internally, the, uh, okay. Internally, this thing, the D-pad, the D-pad is uh, braced by this crossbar on the original controller is not braced on the old one, I could just, on the new one, sorry. I could just push this out right now. And uh, other than that, and it's a D-pad, they don't appear to have changed very much other than some basic construction like the plastic mold. And these buttons, if you look at them, they're same as well. Uh, they come out completely. So there's those, start select. There's this, start and select. Same kind of button. Uh, a little bit different the way it's supported and, and held in. Those pins on the side, the pin holes. Then the last one. Is right there. Versus right there. So I mean, pretty much the same construction for the most part. It's really remarkable how how identical they are and I do wonder if they're uh, rehashing any of the original molds or or what their process is for retaining accuracy this is gross you can see that in the reassembly here actually this is interesting they don't have this on the old one so I didn't take too careful attention of how these went in originally but you can see on this one, there are two different sets of mounts. So you've got a horizontal slot on those two opposing and then a circular hole on these two opposing. And if you look at the plastic controller, those will correspond. So that actually will make it easier to just kind of remount it in a suitable fashion. I wonder if this new one is better at keeping grime out of it. It's a, it's a bit more sealed, I'm noticing. Like all these parts just fit uh, tighter and they go over the edges of the plastic, which could impact the amount of grossness that gets in there, but it could also just be because it's brand new. And for start and select, you can see that there are two rubber switches you can push for that one. So those depress into the, uh, into the buttons over here. That's good enough. Pretty remarkable differences overall. Uh, first of all, I don't want to touch anything until I wash my hands. That old controller is kind of gross. Secondly, the PCB has gone to this. That's that's your PCB on the new one. It's not even that complicated in terms of components. I mean, there's a couple caps on there, a USB input, USB controller, and a ribbon cable. From this PCB on the old one, much of which is completely unused. Uh, I mean, that's unused on the backside too, but they've compressed it on the new one to be just the small PCB I held up. And then instead of having a physical, like a, a, a hardened PCB, a real PCB printed circuit board on the top side for the buttons, they've replaced it with just a ribbon cable that runs to all the switches. So pretty damn cool. Um, interesting teardown overall, I would say. A bit, bit more interesting than the PS1 Classic itself, but you should check that one out too because we go through the components on here, what they're capable of, and uh, it is massively improved over the PS1, but it's also running emulation software, so it has overhead on there that didn't exist before. So that's it for this one. As always, subscribe for more. If you find these components interesting, we'll link it below, but just we, we might not think it's actually worth it yet. I'm not sure. So. If you want to buy it, you can click the link, but we're not telling you to because we don't know yet. Uh, otherwise, store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one or a mod mat like the one I was working on during the video. And you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. helps out there as well. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.